Hello everyone. The New Testament of the Bible consists of four gospel narratives, the Acts of the Apostles, and 21 epistles or letters, and the book of Revelation. The Gospels tell us the life of Jesus and his teachings. The Acts of the Apostles detail the work of Jesus' followers in propagating the new faith, while the epistles teach the meaning and implications of the faith. The book of Revelation foretells the future events. Friends, today's second reading is taken from the first letter of John, presumably written by John, the apostle and evangelist, and addresses a group of believers who were apparently influenced by the teaching and work of false prophets, who were denying or rejecting the incarnation of Jesus Christ and causing much division among Christians. To encourage them in their faith and to repudiate heretical teachings, John recalled the privileges and status they enjoyed as believers in Christ. Just as members of clubs have access to a range of elite benefits, so also can Christians enjoy precious spiritual privileges according to John. He writes, See what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. Friends, in order for the believers to recognize the privileges, John first demands that they should see or behold. Friends, when you want people to pay attention to something important, we tell them to look so that they can see it. In like manner, John urges Christians to direct their minds and hearts towards something unique, special and extraordinary, and that is God the Father's love for them. In the Bible, the Greek word used for love is agape. It is the highest form of love. It is selfless, sacrificial and unconditional. This love leads a person to voluntarily suffer inconvenience, discomfort and even death for the benefit of another, without expecting anything in return. It is the love that someone gives not because the other person is lovable or worthy of love, but because the giver is a loving person. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Christ died once and for all for our sins. He, the just one, died for the unjust in order to lead us to God. The wages of sin is death. Friends, although we deserve to die because of our sins, God sent His Son to die in our place so we can be saved. Thus, John reminds the Christians that this is the kind of love that God has for humankind. And then John says that God has bestowed this love on us. To bestow is to present a gift or to honor. God has presented or honored the humankind with the gift of his love, that is, his son Jesus Christ sacrificed on the cross, so that we may be called the children of God. It means that it is, the one, it is only by the gift of God that we become children of God. By nature, we are just creatures of God, but it is by his grace that we become his children. While all the human beings are children of God in the sense that they owe their lives to Him, John believes that we become God's children by an act of God's initiating grace and our response to it. Thus, it is a privilege to become the children of God. But then the question arises, if being a Christian is a great honor, why are Christians rejected and despised by others? Friends, John answers that the reason the world does not know us is that he did not know him. In other words, two Christians do not have to be surprised that others in the world, such as non-believers, non-Christians, non-practicing Christians, and even members of their own families, do not pay attention to what they see, believe in, and act on. This is because they are experiencing only what Jesus Christ has already experienced. He came into the world as the Son of God, but the world did not love or approve Him, 
but rejected him and put him to death. The world preferred its own ideas and refused to accept his divine message. The same is bound to happen to anyone who chooses to embark on the way of Jesus Christ. Friends, John further pointed out the privileges that are still awaiting us. He said, We are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Friends, what he means is that in many ways, this life is only a beginning. Here and now, our status is children of God. But what we shall be is still beyond human comprehension and imagination, and it has not yet been revealed until now. Yet, he believes when Christ appears in his glory, we shall be like him. This just goes to show that our future and our glory will be much greater. Here John's belief is based on the old creation story which says that man was made in God's image and likeness. But our sins have made us lose the full image or likeness of God. As St. Paul says, we have fallen short of the glory of God. However, the Apostle John wants us to rest assured that through our belief in the work of Christ, we would bear the image and the likeness of God once again. Moreover, he says that we would not only be like him, but we shall also see him as he is. In other words, the end result of all our devotion and worship of God here on earth is to see the face of God and be like him in holiness. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. We must be careful not to drift away from our faith. Just like the first century Christians, we too can easily drift away from our belief in Christ as God and from the truth of Christ. Spiritual drift occurs when we stop paying attention to what we hear and see, when we neglect to keep Christ as our anchor, when we keep company with people who seek to distort the scriptures and twist church's teachings to appeal to their secular world, when we face opposition, ridicule and persecution as a result of our commitment to Christ. However, no matter how far our lives have drifted away from God, we must never be discouraged and think we are beyond redemption because God loves us and no matter how far we have gone away from his laws and instructions and worship, he patiently awaits our return. 2. Our time here on earth is a preparation for the great glory we shall see. In fact, it is already being fulfilled as we behold the glory of the Lord in his word, in the incarnation of his son Jesus Christ, in the church, that is, the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, popes, priests, nuns and missionaries, in the faithful, in the sacraments and sacramentals such as holy water, candles, ashes, palms, crucifixes, medals, rosaries, scapulars and images of our Lord, the Blessed Virgin and the saints. Friends, these are signs of God's love and care for us. The fact is, we become what we behold. Once our eyes are opened through faith, we are able to see Him for who He really is. Therefore, meditating on and looking intently at the person and the work of Christ will result in transformation. Paul says, we are being transformed in this likeness, which means that it is something that happens to us when we behold Him. 3. None of us has loved or trusted or thanked or obeyed or treasured God as we ought. Therefore, we all deserve eternal punishment in hell. Even though we are guilty, He still loves us and has bestowed upon us many spiritual privileges and blessings. Most of all, He has given us the right to be His children because of His Son Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. 4. Even if others do not recognize what we do in our love for them, let us remember that Christ himself has already experienced rejection and that those who share in Christ's sufferings will also share in his glory. That is, we shall be like him 
and we shall see him face to face. Amen. God bless you.